uh, welcome to this video about the open domain problems and here we are now talking about the PML. Uh, the PML, uh, the first idea was uh, that we would like to handle non-normal impingement of the waves and also not uh, having this uh, first, first order representative of the characteristic. So this is the idea of the perfectly matched layer technique and the desired properties are so we have again the screen body which is radiating we would like to have an open domain problem and now we we does not we do not only consider the, the gray the light gray shaded body uh, which is our computation domain we also consider a, an additional layer which is defined by the damping region omega 2 and that here is now we would like to design a PML like that we have no reflections of waves at the interface between omega 1 and omega 2 and we would like to have a damping function in omega 2 which increases with the distance to the interface that we as soon as the waves enter the second domain that they are increasingly damped with the distance they travel. So in the in the one day case, as we had it for the for the ABC, uh, we assume plane wave and we would like to have impedance matching. Impedance matching, uh, we already defined the acoustic impedance uh, before the previous video. Impedance matching means that at the interface gamma d here, at this interface, we have no reflection, that the reflection coefficient is zero and the two impedance, the two acoustic impedance of omega 1 and omega 2 at the interface gamma d match, so in this sense are equal. And the thing is now, um, how can we satisfy? that the impedances matches although we are introducing a damping function in omega 2 which in some sort of sense would be counterproductive in according to uh, satisfying impedance matching but we will see it in a minute uh, that this works so we are introducing a damping function in omega 2 um, damping function itself is nothing complicated uh, we already satisfied this that we match the goal to as we had on the first slide at the damping functions is in place and now what we would like to have is impedance matching impedance matching between the two domains at the interface can be satisfied the following we would like to have in omega 2 a deviation to the speed of sound in the characteristic by this damping function and this will be compensated in the acoustic or in the in the density variations and so the density of the which also defines the impedance is also modified and since both are equally modified the terms cancel out and we will receive the original impedance set one at the interface gamma d and now we have impedance matching at the interface although we have damping in the second region which we will come to this right now uh, defined on the wave number in omega 1 and the wave number tilde in the domain omega 2 can define the wave number k tilde which is a function of the wave number k of in omega 1 and this modified modified term yeah in sub yeah subject to the damping function so the wave number in omega 2 is somehow deviating from the one in the domain omega 1 and now we can define the solution inside the PML zone and this solution is now defined by the in the exponent by the k tilde 
and this k tilde is now modified and the modification yields do an to an additional damping term which now damps the acoustic waves inside the PML. So the summary is that we have acoustic impedance matching and we have damping inside the PML which is excellent. Now we met the two goals and we can go on. Um, the original idea was that we would like to tackle oblique incident of waves, waves to the interface, interface gamma d. Uh, there the impedance is yeah, compensated by the, the cosine of the incident angle. And the idea now is that we can more or less decompose the waves into the coordinate directions. That if a wave is in as an oblique incident, then we decompose it into two waves. The one is has a normal incident, and the one, the other one, is not. Uh, is just uh, traveling in another coordinate coordinate direction. And this separate treatment um, now ensures that we can also damp waves that are of in oblique incident. Uh, how is this done uh, in a mathematical sense? Uh, the PML uh, in an open domain problem context, the PML itself is just a complex coordinate stretching. So we have a solution domain, which is the original coordinate x, and we have some some additional layer, which is the tilde layer, so the omega two. And there we have some coordinate stretching, which modifies the, the coordinate and gives some damping to the to the solution variable. Um, the coordinate transforms then as follows in the in the gradients of the coordinates, um, and there we have some prefactors, which are these eta factors, and these eta factors can now be in a simple Cartesian coordinate uh, um, as, as we, we have it uh, depicted in the previous picture uh, we can modify the Helmholtz equation and based on these uh, prefactors we then can simply model model the Helmholtz equation um, and as per definition these prefactors will be one uh, in zones where we don't have any damping functions. Um, so we are going to recover the original wave equation for the harmonics analysis in zones where we have no damping function. This is a very nice property and yeah, leaves us with a very, very interesting technique, the PML uh, technique. Uh, is it is possible to use a different variety of, of different uh, damping functions. Uh, we have implemented the constant, the quadratic increase and then inverse distance um, inverse distance um, damping function which is gradually increasing its damping value until the outer boundary and it can be proved that this is an optimal damping function for the Helmholtz equation. Uh, then we have also a general some general rules uh, for the for the open CFS solver that we use the same spatial discretization in the PML regions as in the propagation regions. Uh, we should use at least uh, two finite elements in thickness direction of the PML layer. Um, the inverse distance damping works best, and the layer thickness in impinging direction of wavelength divided by 8 is good, uh, but in the time domain each PML node has 5 degrees of freedom. So PML in time domain increase the system matrix as we have it in OpenCM CFS drastically. This should be kept in mind uh, for the harmonic uh, simulations. This is not a problem. So there we have not 
not this increase in decrease of freedom. So thank you for watching this video about the PML. A PML technique is a very interesting technique uh, to to model a free field radiation. Thank you very much.